arriving in Belgium from outside the Schengen area, I need one of these to get me through. And this is how it used to be across the whole of Europe. Before the creation of the Schengen area, borders between European countries were closed and often a chore to get through. But now, crossing the border between Luxembourg and France seems perfectly natural to us. With all the checks on documents, car searches and administrative procedures making things slow for citizens, it was sometimes difficult to feel truly European with so many obstacles to free movement. Schengen is now a landmark name. And it was this tiny village in Luxembourg that gave its name to the Schengen Agreement, when in 1985, France, Germany and the Benelux countries met together to bring about the end of their internal borders. But it wasn't until the 26th of March 1995, just 20 years ago, that the agreement came fully into force. The agreement was one of the first steps in formalising enhanced cooperation between member states and the European community outside of EU treaties. First, they had to overcome the opposition of several member states before they could bring about their ambitious plans for the free movement of peoples. It was with the signing of the Amsterdam Treaty in 1999 that the legal framework known as the Schengen Acquis became fully integrated into the EU. But what is the Schengen Agreement? Its purpose is to do away with border controls and these rather lovely hats here. And it reinforces cooperation between the police, the judicial and customs authorities in the countries who've signed the agreement. It also paves the way for the countries to work jointly on strengthening their external borders. Today, 22 out of the 28 EU member states are part of the Schengen area, together with some non-EU countries such as Norway, Iceland and Switzerland. Some countries have special advantages. This is true for Denmark. The Danish can choose to apply or not for any new measures. And the United Kingdom and Ireland, not formally part of the Schengen area, can still participate in certain provisions of the Schengen Aki, as can Bulgaria, the Cyprus Republic, Croatia and Romania. One of the tools for strengthening police cooperation is the Schengen Information System, or SIS2. For example, police in one country can help arrest wanted criminals from another country or track down stolen objects all essential for the Schengen area to function properly. So do member countries have to have their borders open all of the time? Well, no, some exceptions apply. For example, a country can decide to re-establish its border controls for reasons of national security or public order. As France did in the summer of 1995, when it was faced with a series of terrorist attacks. And since October 2013, it's been possible to reinstate border controls for a maximum duration of 24 months in exceptional circumstances. That is, when controls at the external border of the Schengen area can no longer be guaranteed. For the great majority of MEPs here in the European Parliament, the Schengen Agreement and ACQUI are the backbone of the EU. Freedom of movement is seen as one of the fundamental freedoms.